going to our church leadership. Yes, yes, yes. First we have Pastor Katrina Catherine, Ch Catherine Chambers. Pastor Catherine Chambers. Overseer Aurelia Jamat. Yes, yes, yes. And all the way from New Jersey, Pastor Loretta Hall. Yes. Have a seat, lady. Have a seat. Join us in our living room. Yes. Thank you all so much for being here. Thank you, thank you, thank you. You all look lovely and wonderful. You came up, they forgot to give you your mic, yes, so we're gonna yes. do that right now. And we are in, we are having a grand and wonderful time. Aren't you having an awesome yes. time? Amen, amen. So we're gonna jump right into our questions, if yes. you will allow us. Moving right along. Beautiful ladies, powerful women, anointed women we thank god that you are here with us tonight but we want to know the real deals <laughs> so we know as that many of us are in various fields whether it's tech whether it's judicial uh what in your opinion are the best ways to navigate the world from a female pastor, and I don't just mean female pastor, but as a female in leadership, similar to uh, law, you know, sometimes they feel that, oh, we're softer, we're this, we're the other, and sometimes it's just compassion. So how do you navigate, or how have you been able to navigate if you've even had the challenge of living in a world where it is somewhat gender biased? Somewhat. I Somewhat. guess. <laughs> I guess I'll start. And thank you for having me. Uh, well, the Bible says that there are neither male That's nor right. female in Christ. And um, for me, it has not really been an issue. I have a strong covering. Amen. Amen. And my senior pastor, Bishop Chambers. Heard of him. <laughs> <laughs> Um, covers me and would not allow anyone to abuse me. That's right, that's right. In Amen. ministry or out. Amen. Amen. Strong support. Anyone else want to tackle that? <laughs> I think I can piggyback and say the same. I have not experienced any um, pulpit discrimination uh -huh. uh, because we have strong men who are confident in who they are. So if they're confident, we get to stand in who we are and we can be feminine. In the, in the pulpit. We don't have to be heavy footed or anything. We can be graceful and be yes. the daughters. And look fabulous. That, and yes. look fabulous. <laughs> and be the daughters that God have, has called us to be and to give that heart um, to ministry that the ministry needs. Amen. Well, you have a unique situation. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's unique, but it's amazing. Um, yeah, unlike yeah. my sisters, um, I am just delighted to be here. And I have to say that um, you know, I heard Lady Chambers speak about Bishop Chambers being her covering and Lady Hall. However, most of you know that I'm a widow. My husband passed away during COVID. So during COVID, I lost my protector. But I learned that God is my greater protector. Amen. Amen. And one of the things that I've learned being in leadership is one, leadership is not a walk in the park. So you will experience gender bias. Um, most men are intimidated and use the scriptures to speak <laughs> about why women should not lead. However, if you search the scriptures, you'll see that women are leaders, yes. both the old and the new. Yes. So, you know, one of the things about being a woman in leadership is assert yourself. You don't have to compete with a man. Be a woman. Be a woman. I like that. You have a voice. Yes. And you have presence. Yes. And I'm going to turn it back to you because I can go. <laughs> I on. love that. We were getting ready to go in. It's fine. It's fine. <laughs> fire, fire. Even when she is sitting, she's full of fire. <laughs> That's why we got them here. Yes, yes. So what advice, and on that, what advice would you give, again, 
me as a female leader, I don't necessarily, and I definitely don't, but <laughs> hypothetically speaking, uh, not necessarily as a senior pastor or a senior leader, but to female clergies, uh, clergy members, whether it be servant leader or clergy as far as deaconate, diaconate, or me as a church sister that just wants to love God, uh, what advice would you give me, in addition to what you already said, because I already felt that as the answer, uh, <laughs> what can you and should you give me as a church member coming up and looking to be a leader? Well, I would say, <clears throat> excuse me, be true to who you are. Amen. Um, as Pastor Overseer Jamon has said, you don't have to compete with anyone. You know, be a woman and know where God is leading you. Amen. Don't be um, pushed or pressed into an area that you have not been called into. That's right. That's right. I also think that, you know, whether you're leading church ministry or a small group, if you're a supervisor on your job, you're, you're supposed to be saved wherever you are. That's you have right. to show up as that person that God has called you to be and to be true to that. We have to be consistent. We have too many people who are bipolar in their <laughs> calling. You know, and we need to be consistent in who we are. So if you, call, if you came to my job where I direct, you're going to find Pastor Loretta. She's going to be there. She's That's not right. going to be somewhere being Present. a different person. Yes. When you see me in the mall, you're going to see Pastor Loretta because we have to learn how to be consistent and, and lead ourselves. So oftentimes we want that leadership from someplace else, but we have to lead our own homes. Yeah. You have to lead that PSC and G bill. You have to lead that water bill. <laughs> You're right. Right? And so leadership starts with yourself first yes. and, and being a good follower and, being, and having that discipline. Discipline definitely is important. I just want to say that in order to lead, especially in ministry, it's important to love God but it's even more important to love his people. Amen, amen, amen. You know, think about it. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son because he loved us so much, he didn't want to lose us. Wow. So, you know, I think about it, and by, by profession, I'm a, a social worker. You too. Uh, social worker. <laughs> another social worker. And um, I, love, I love my job. I love what I did. I love helping people. It's just God has just shifted. Mm -hmm. It's a change where I'm no longer working in the secular world. Now I'm working from the religious point, but I can help both worlds. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. Very true. God is strategic. Amazing. He's very strategic. Mm -hmm. And you know, as women, as powerful as you are, what advice would you give me Last year, Bishop installed us, us meeting Pastor Martin over there also. What advice would you give us coming up? Because we are new in the ranks, and you guys have been through it all. You've been through storms. You have stood the test of time, and you are still standing. What advice would you give us that are now entering this field like you guys are? What would you say to us? to focus on? What is that one thing that you would say to focus on that one thing? Don't believe your eyes, believe your faith. Amen. Wow. 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 Powerful. Believe your faith. Thank you. Find yourself a circle of sisters yes. that support you. Amen. Amen. Find yourself a good mentor. Yes. Amen. Find yourself people that want to see you go up. Amen, amen. Um, I would say there are lots of, you know, just going back to what I said earlier in being true to yourself, uh, there are a lot of big voices out there. There's lots of noise, um, bloggers and vloggers and <laughs> um, experts and Everyone knows everything about certified everything. Certified about nothing. Yes. <laughs> yes, right, and certified um, in nothing. Don't look to those voices, to those people. Don't pattern yourself or mock 
or, or behave like what you're not. You know, if God has given you three words to deliver, deliver those three words Amen. and sit down. Amen. If Amen. you're not, and, and I had to learn this for me, if you're not a hooper, don't hoop. Don't hoop. Don't try to fake it. Right. Stand flat-footed and just say what God has given you to say. Now, Amen. every every blue moon, God may come through, yes. and I might raise my voice. <laughs> but basically, um, by profession, I am a teacher. Okay. I am um, I'm a nurse practitioner. So I do a lot of teaching, um, healing, and applying um, balms, healing. <laughs> Yeah, B A L M. You know, healing ointment. We got you. And and that type of thing is what I do. So, I'm not a screamer and a yeller. Be true okay. to who you are. Yeah. Amen. Can I just add, what my sister is saying is be authentic. Yeah. Yes. 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 Because he really has called you for your gift, for your gift. He doesn't need another fill in the blank. Right. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> he doesn't exactly. need another one. He has one already. He wants you and who you are authentically. Exactly. And you know, the other thing I want to say um, is, and don't tell God what he can't do. Amen. Well, Amen. how he can't use you. Amen. I've been guilty of that. Me, Lord? No. Me too. No. Not me. Too. Me too. Not me. Question him, right? <laughs> is there anyone yes. that is not guilty of that? <laughs> Can I just say this, that Most when definitely. my husband passed away, um, it was a major transition. Um, one, he was a man. <laughs> True. I'm a woman. <laughs> so some of the challenges that I encountered is like, okay, you're the pastor now, but I don't know if I can sit under a woman. Wow. You don't, mm -mm, you don't have, anybody who knew my husband was good looking. Yes, he was. Yeah. <laughs> That's why he was my boyfriend. <laughs> so, you know, I mean, before they even heard what he had to say, it was like, yes. So, yes, so, Bishop. <laughs> so, so, you know, it's, 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 I, I had to uh, come to grips with the fact that God put me where I am. And God has given me the ability to lead the people that he has placed in front of me. And so, you know, you have to understand that you have a unique mark. I don't have your anointing. Yes. I don't have your gift. We, we might come from the same household, but we're all different. Yes. Every one of us have a different personality, but there's something that we have that accentuates yes. and will help someone else. I'm God's special child. Me too. And I had the audacity to tell God, like, he must have the wrong person. <laughs> Like, yes. he must have met someone else. Yes. 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 And you can't believe, when God calls you, you can't even believe your own hearing yes. sometimes. But God yes. knows everything about us, and he knows the capacity. And it's in that yes that he begins to draw out that capacity That's that he right. already knew existed. So don't be like me. Yes. Don't ask God, is he sure yes. about what he's doing? Because now he's going to prove it to you. Yes. And he's going to drag you every which way but loose. Yes. And you could have been there already. Yes. I always ask God if he's sure when I have a preaching or a teaching assignment. Yes. Like, it's like absolutely panic attack. Yes. Like, I yes. always like, oh, Bishop probably home sleeping him and Lady Garden's all cuddled up, and I'm up here studying, and I'm up here doing this. Like, God, you sure you called me for this? We go on and on and yes. on yes. with tantrums. Yes. How do you keep focus? Tell me, please. <laughs> <laughs> I'm with you. Oh, my God! <laughs> I'm with you. I, there have been, um, I'm a little better now. Okay. Because I'm being pushed. Good, good. And because I have to do things more often. But I'm with you. And this is my feeling about the gospel mm -hmm. and the word of God. It's like medicine. Mm. It is medicine. Yes, and yes. I've said to the Lord many times, I'm like, Lord, are you really, are you sure? Because I don't want to be the cause of someone dying. Wow. Um, wow. A, a needle, an IV, medication in the hand 
of an unskilled clinician wow. will kill someone. Wow. Yes, yes, yes. The yes. gospel yes. in the hand yes. of someone Ooh. untrained yes. can kill someone. Wow. So to me, it is very important. Yes. So I, I, I never understood people who wanted to, were dying to preach. I don't either. Would cut your throat. <laughs> to get an appointment. Yes. I, I don't get that. <laughs> or call you to yeah. get an appointment. Yeah, oh, yeah, it's that. my time. It's my turn. Who don't forget me. <laughs> yes. Wow. Go ahead, Pastor. Oh, Pastor, oh, you had an oh, answer? I, 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 I had something similar happen to me because I was saying, God, I don't have anything for the people. Mm -hmm. Like, I've been in church all my life. I've, I know scripture. I don't have anything for the mm -hmm. people. Mm -hmm. And he says, you have a 25-year health career. Mm. He says, in my church, it's sick. It needs a clinician. Wow. Right? And you, what, what I have given you over the 25 years is enough for you to serve the people. Amen. And so God doesn't give us anything that's not useful. Amen. And when he invests in us, he's, he expects a return Amen. on his investment. Amen. 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 Last night, I wasn't able to be here, but uh, the message last night um, powerful. was extremely powerful. And I think that with me, I heard a lot because I'm like, God, I don't want to do this. <laughs> you know, I'd rather be in California someplace on a beach with shades on. Yeah, the Bahamas. Nah. Not the Bahamas. <laughs> okay. We've done too much church in the Bahamas to tell you the truth. I know too many people on that island. Aruba, Aruba. <laughs> the thing about it is like my sis said, okay, God, these are your souls. I don't want to damage anybody. But you have to also know that God has already placed and equipped when he's called you, yes. Amen. when you answer the call. Amen. It might take a time of preparation, but look at Moses. Look at some of the leaders in yes. scripture. You know, I'm grateful for my church. I love Nazareth Christian Amen. Fellowship. All right, Nazareth. Woo! Where you and at? I, I have to say it because they allow me to practice with them. I'm not perfect. Until we sell out the stadiums. Yeah. Okay? I'm going to get there. Oh but God has blessed me with them where they will say, go ahead. It's all right, Pastor. Mm -hmm. Or support. And that means the world. Yeah. Um, I have a covenant with God. I will not fail you. Amen. Amen. Because you've given me an opportunity. I didn't ask for it. But you saw me fit enough. Yes. Trusted you. Yes. You trusted yes. me yes. to carry out justice, to carry out liberation, Amen. to carry out love, Absolutely. to carry out freedom, Amen. to take the message of salvation. Amen. And I'm grateful for that. And to Amen. breathe life. I Amen. Breathe life. Amen. Yes. We, uh, go ahead. Just one more thing I want to um, uh, say in, in respect to that. When you have a preaching assignment and uh, you're overly concerned about the response of the people, mm -hmm. that's not your responsibility. Amen. My other passion is cooking. Mm -hmm. So it is my responsibility to cook a good, wholesome, healthy meal. And those and people are clapping up because they've tasted her cooking. <laughs> Go ahead. And said it before you. I am not responsible for how you eat it, That's right. for how you digest it. Right. That's on you. My job you was to cook it and best. serve it. Beautiful, beautiful. To make sure it is the best. We have a question coming. We have a question. Yes, yes. this is a question from online. What was the most difficult thing you've dealt with as a woman leader? Saying yes. It was really difficult. It was difficult. It was, you know, I didn't have the confidence. Uh, my husband is a preacher, preacher. Love you, boo, yes, if you're watching. Yes, yes. Uh, a preacher, preacher. And uh, I've come from great women preachers. I know great women preachers. And I'm like, I'm not a preacher. You know, <laughs> what, what am I going to do? You know, and uh, being com getting comfortable uh, to the, the person who asked the question, getting comfortable that God wants teachers too. Yes. And if teaching is what you do, yes. That's what you do. Yes, 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 yes. Walk in your anointing. Walk in your calling. Mm -hmm. Amen. 
Anyone else want to take that on? Repeat the question again one time. It was what, as a female leader? The most difficult thing that you've dealt with. The most difficult thing that you've dealt with. Other than the passing of your husband. Uh, Men. Would you I, care to elaborate? I don't think it has to be a preacher to say that. Sila. <laughs> Sila, all right. Well, it's sealed. It is sealed. It is no, sealed. I, actually, again, it goes back to the challenge of um, being equipped, gender bias. Mm -hmm. uh, but then you feel that in every aspect of yeah. work when you're out there with other males. So. Um, yeah, just do what God's called you to do. That's Amen. it. And do it well. <laughs> With excellence. Amen. We have one more question from online or a different question? We have two questions online. Okay. Um, so the first question is, what would you, what advice would you give? What are some of the challenges that women in church deal with in terms of leadership and advice for young or women young in leadership in church? So it's two part. So the first one is, what are some of the challenges you have as a woman in ministry, which I think has been answered, but you could elaborate. And two, what advice would you give to women who are younger in their leadership responsibilities in church? I think um, for me, I've, I find that uh, once young women, they're, they're so passionate about their calling, they're not willing to wait um, for process um, and you have to wait for process because it's, it's, it can be reckless out there. Um, it can be dangerous out there. And they think that you're holding them back from something great and you're just trying to keep them from the wolves. I, I concur. And I say find a mentor, gravitate uh, to someone that you're aspiring, um, aspiring to be like, not to imitate but to be like who has fruit mm -hmm. yeah, you like you eat, like yeah. <laughs> yeah fruit like you like yeah. if you like strawberries find somebody that, that likes represents strawberries, strawberries. <laughs> yes and does it well Amen. and not I'll, shriveled yeah. up ones <laughs> not rotten and i also think they think it's glamorous yeah, it's not glamorous no. at all it's not glamorous at all it's a lot of hard work um, you don't get to sleep at night, and I think God gives Who you. you telling? Say that again. <laughs> you Say don't that get again. to sleep much, right? Because when you do deliver the word, yeah. you do worry if the word landed, yeah. right? You do pray. The enemy does attack you, mm -hmm. you know, and he doesn't let you rest, so you know. So you know it, what goes into bringing the word of God or or being a woman of God. It's a lot of toil Amen. that's inside of it, and so if God lets us get a nice shoe and a nice purse from time to time, <laughs> doesn't mean that it's glamorous. That is so true. And, and you second guess yourself. Yeah. You're like, did I need to say that? Did I need to say all of or, that? Oh, shucks, I forgot to say yes. that. I should have written said. there, but yes. I didn't say it. Yes, yes. And, and for me, I am definitely, well, I come from a note <laughs> church. Take that's how we do. No, 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 that's how we preach <laughs> from notes, yeah. yeah. We don't shoot from the hip. Okay. I mean, you know, we can express ourselves from the heart, but it's paper, it is, it, it, is, is it is written, yeah. <laughs> so sometimes when you're, you're um, trying to deliver and you're uh, a slave, so to speak, to your notes, yeah. it's, it's uh, a difficult maneuver sometimes. But I'm, I'm getting a lot better with that. I always wonder how T.D. Jakes do it. I'm like, how does he do it? Like, how does he just walk on the stage and just start talking? And just start to talk. Like, do you have like a mirror in front of you, a glass in front of you, a screen in front of you? What do you do? But I heard it is called conversational preaching. That's what I'm researching. Can I just say Google real it. quick about that? <laughs> he didn't just start overnight. Yes, yes. People forget his back days yes, yes. when he was in the hills of West Virginia. Yes. Absolutely. We see success process, now. Right, right, right. And my and sister we talked about forward to there. We like right. the glamour. Right. That's what attracts us. But one of the things that I would like to say really quick is that I pray that more young women would be attracted to ministry. Yes. Yes. Because we find that instead of being attracted, we want to go do other, other things. things. Yeah. And there's a joy in serving God, and there's a, yes, there a, 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 an accomplishment. And you can do great things for God yes. in ministry. So 
you know, find someone. Um, even if you want to be in ministry, find someone who's seasoned and sit yourself down yes, under them. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> sit down under them. And receive. Yes. And receive. One last question. Yes. Um, what are your thoughts on the way that people now come to church? Ah! Mean it. Mean it. That's a loaded question. Meaning. So we're going to let you take that any kind. Is there any explanation? Meaning. You can't go to court like that. No. <laughs> um, I, I, that's the answer. Yes. Can I, can I say something? Yes. Growing up, and I told my church this on Sunday, we had club clothes, school clothes, <laughs> play clothes, <laughs> sleep clothes, Party clothes. Why do you want to come to church looking like you're going to the club? Why do you want to come to church with your bonnet and pajama pants? Why do you want to come to church with your play clothes on? Check your wardrobe and make sure you look like you're going to church. I'm done. Thank you, ma'am. <laughs> and she dropped the mic. <laughs> Take that. Really, I really strongly believe if you wouldn't wear it to the judge and to court, you wouldn't. You shouldn't and wear we it to the house of right God, because <laughs> He is the judge. Amen. And if you went to the courtroom and some of the things that we sing in church, they would tell you to go back home and come back. Wow. But, but here's another thing about court. I've seen people go to court dressed a certain way, mm -hmm. and they get treated accordingly. Yeah, yeah. So if you have on a wife beater, mm -hmm. don't expect to be treated like you're not a wife beater. Mm. <laughs> Ooh, ouch. I cannot. Now, I cannot. that question can be taken so many ways, yes. and I'm not sure which way the person meant, meant. it. But if we're talking about um, yes. uh, people that just want to come in off of the street, no or we're rules. talking about rank sinners, then I don't care how you come. Right. Just come. Just come. Just come. Just come. But if we're talking about people in leadership, baptized believers, then that's, a, that's, that's different. Then, then you should dress accordingly. accordingly. Or at least not offensive. Yes. That works. Yes. Not offensively. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Give God glory. Our time for this segment is up. Woo!